Just like just means you understand that we're trying to balance up everything in our lives, everything in our families, and everything in our situation so that, you know, you, as somebody is a women coordinator, is also a member of the choir, is also in the marriage committee, and is also in another thing, and it's no time to take care of our children, no time to take care of anything, there's no tribe. And that one is not like you appreciate the person, you are angry at the person, you make him so busy, you make her so busy, she cannot take care of husband or children or family or personal work. We're going to balance up everything so that by the grace of God, this work will prosper in our hands. If you're in agreement, give me a good amen. In Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them. They are life unto those that find them. And then it goes on to say, the health and to all the flesh. Health to all their flesh. I pray that this health and this strength and this rejuvenation that is coming alive again, renewal of strength, the Lord will grant to everyone. In Job chapter 23, Job chapter 23, here we're reading from verse 12. Job chapter 23, and we're reading from verse 12. 12. Here the word of God says concerning this Job, here was his commitment, and here should be your commitment. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. From the commandment of the lips of the Lord, I have esteemed the word of his mouth, the word of God, more than my necessary food. I have esteemed the word of the mouth of the Lord more than my necessary food. Is that word that gets us convicted? Is that word that gets us converted? Is that word that gets us courageous? Is that word that keeps us consecrated? Is that word that keeps us continuing in the path of righteousness? When well, you don't have time to even have quiet time yourself. No time to look at the word of God and no time to benefit from the word of God and no time to feed, feed on this heavenly manner. How will you have conviction? How will you have conversion? How will you have the courage to move on and the courage to live the life that is glorifying unto the Lord? How will you be so committed and safe? This is what I know to be true, and I'm going to follow it until the end of my life. But if there's no conviction, if you didn't have any personal knowledge to internalize the word in your life, what other people are doing, that's what you do. And then if other people come and they say another thing, that's what you do. But when you say, this is the way, and this is the will of God, because I learned that, in the, at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have conviction. That's how Daniel proposed to be such, that he will not defile himself for the meat of the, that the king was giving them. And then he requested of the you know, that he will not defile himself. Conviction building up that conviction within your heart as you personally take the word of God and the courage and the conversion and the consecration and the commitment for the rest of your life. It tells us in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. We're reading from verse 16. Colossians chapter 3. Reading from verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. I doubt whether you ever do that. Whether you ever do that. You know, you just listen to other people doing the singing. And then you, when you come here, you might sing from the book. You are not singing from your heart. You are, you know, singing and looking here and looking there. And the meaning of the words do not dawn on you to say that here is the 
depth of theology in this world. And as you see the depth of theology, and then you appreciate what that song is saying. You appreciate, fill my cup, Lord. You are thirsty and you are hungry. You want him to fill your cup to overflow. You read that, you sing that, you read that, you sing that, and it's going to the Lord like melody unto the Lord. It says, you are speak, you're speaking to one another and to yourself singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do, in watch or deed, you do all to in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him heavenly manner the word of god the word of life the one that gives strength in first peter first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 1 it says wherefore laying aside all malice if you're going to take in the word if you're going to benefit from the word if the word is going to have any impact on your life to give you strength and stamina and to give you courage and boldness you lay aside all malice all guile all hypocrisies all envies and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby you're born again, you're saved. You move on to sanctification. And then you move on to strength. You move on or you find it to be your sufficiency. Salvation through the word. Sanctification through the word. Strength, stamina, courage and boldness with conviction through the word. And then sufficiency anywhere you turn. You find that there is a promise of God giving unto you. You've been studying that word. You've been reading that word. You've been digesting that word. You have been personalizing. You have been internalizing that word in your life. And anything that bumps at you, anything that strikes you, there's always a promise of God. There's always a word of God that addresses that situation. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 it says, but ye a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, and it says a peculiar people. That's what makes you peculiar. Peculiar in courage, peculiar in conviction, and peculiar in your supplication, in your prayer, peculiar in your stand, peculiar, you have a backbone that other people do not have. Other people are like jellyfish, amphibians. They are neither there nor here. But when you are storing the word, and you are saturating your mind, your heart in the word of God, it's so peculiar. And people will see that no wind blows that disturbs you. And there's no temptation that comes and floods you. And there's no challenge that comes and destroys your life. It says peculiar people that you should show forth. The praises of him who called, us, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This year, you are strong. This year, the might of the Lord will walk in your life in Jesus' name. You're not in a hurry this year to rush out in the morning. You have good, wonderful devotional time and good, wonderful, quiet time that you, you must eat that food. It's the thing that prepares you for what is going to happen during the day. God talks to you through his word. You talk to God through prayer. And when you marry those two things together, you'll be an explosive power. A dynamite for the Lord. The word of God is inside you. And during the day, the devil comes and he says, why don't you do this? You look at that messenger of Satan, eyeball to eyeball. And you say, it is reaching. It will flow them. I said it will flow them. And then you go to another corner, one lady somewhere standing by the street side and exposing something that should be covered up. And he's saying, uh, uh, Mr. Do you, before she finishes the sentence, say, Thus says the Lord. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't know you are a prophet. Yes, I am. I didn't know you are a preacher. Somebody there. Any preacher there today? I didn't know you are a preacher. And they'll get out of your way. And then when they even see, they see your face, they see the fire of the Holy Ghost coming out of those eyes. It will burn every evil thing around you in Jesus' name. 
And that's the way God wants us to live this year. He wants us to live in power. He wants us to live with a dynamite inside us. And it is the word, the word that will keep inside us, that does that, the hammer that will shatter every evil thing and the fire that will burn every evil thing out of your life, out of your surrounding, it will happen. I said it will happen. This year will be a year of victory for you. Victory over temptation and victory over the tempter and victory over the temptress in Jesus' name. Look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 29. It's not my word like as a, as a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in pieces. The word of the Lord will break and shatter everything away from your life this year in Jesus' name. You'll not be waiting in one corner there. I'm suffering, I'm suffering. Somebody to come and pray for me. The word of God will come out of you. And when the word comes, Satan will run away from your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 32. Acts chapter 20. And we're reading from verse 32. Acts 20. And we're reading from verse 32. Here it tells us in verse 32, Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. The word you read in the morning, the word you take in in the morning, able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them, among all them which are sanctified. I come to point number two, releasing saints to follow the heavenly master. Releasing saints to follow the heavenly master. Following takes movement. Following demands motion. And you see the master, the heavenly master in front of you. And he says, follow me. And I will make you, it's going to make you into something this year. I said it's going to make it to something this year. It will take a process. It will first of all melt you down. It will melt you. And then it will mold you. It's going to monitor your life. You see, when Jesus said, follow me, he wanted to get them to the process. Number one, melt them, melt them. And then that's why Peter fell down on his face and said, Depart from me, O Lord, because I am a sinner. He saw the hand of God. He saw the power of God. That man was melted. And Jesus said, Don't worry, get off, follow me. I'm going to make you from now on. You will catch me. Melt him. And then to mold him. And while he's molding you, every message you hear, every song you hear, and every Sunday scripture teaching you have, every question and answer you have, everything you have, the Lord is molding you. And then if there is anything that masks the vessel, it's going, it's monitoring. It will monitor your life and monitor your action and monitor your ways. And then it's going to correct things. It's going to modify things as it sees fit. And eventually it makes you and it matures you and it mentors your life. And it is that maturing and mentoring that helps you to be following. But if your feet are tied, even though the master is in front, you cannot follow. If your hands are tied, even though the heavenly master is there, you cannot follow. If your mind is tied, if your spirit is in prison and you are confined and there's a restraint, you cannot follow. If there's somebody that is tying rope in your leg and then is pulling you this way while the master is going that way, you cannot follow. To follow the heavenly master will demand, number one, a release. Release the saints. Break those shackles. Break all those chains. And all the saints who you say, tying them down and restraining them and pulling them back. Break everything. Release those saints so that they can follow the heavenly master. Watch your life this year. If you know there is you know, a personality that ties you down. 
a personality that wants to be in control, a personality that wants to replace Christ, the heavenly master, in your life. If you see that there is a Pharisee, there is a Sadducee, and they put you in the confinement, and then they confine you there, and the master is going, the heavenly master is going, you cannot follow. You will have to get out of that confinement and get out of that imprisonment so that you can follow the master. Release the saints so that they can follow the heavenly master. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 7. Acts, chapter 12, verse 7. Check up your life this year. What ties you down? What holds you back? What chain or shackles are affecting your life, tying you down? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Before those chains fell off, before that release, there's no way you could follow. And before those chains fall off from your hands, the chains fall off from your feet, and the chains fall off from your mind, there are people, they want you to look away from Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. There are people, they want you to give up the control of Christ, your heavenly master. They want to control your life. They want to control what you say. They want to control what you do. They want to control what your focus is. They want to control what you believe. They want to control what you declare. They want to control what your convictions are. And they tie you down. And you cannot follow the heavenly master this year because the heavenly master, he is going, is the narrow way. It's the heavenly way. It's the highway of holiness. You cannot follow that path if you are tied down by anybody, anything. And here you find Peter. Look at verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he says unto him, Cast thy garment in pouch thee. And tell me. And tell me. Follow me, but the release has to take place first. And that's why you look at this year and you say, this year is going to be a year of following the master. A year of freedom, freedom and release from all the things that bound you in the past. And you're saying, I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow him. He will take you places. He will do things. It will command you, this is the way. And the people whose eyes are closed, the people whose minds are closed, and the people whose hearts are dead in, they will not understand. And they'll say, hey, come back, come back. You are going too far. I am still here. You want to tell them, you say, you want to stay there, stay there. I am going up. Somebody there today, I am going where? You're going up, you go up in Jesus' name. Verse 9, and he went out and followed him. He went out and followed him. You need a release before you can follow. And then you find the things that have tied you down, the things that have held you back. A friend, he has so much control over your life. A neighbor, 